Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Kayla, otherwise known as Let's Get Knit Face, here on YouTube and over on Instagram if you want to give me a follow there. And welcome if you are new here. This channel does sewing, crocheting, and tutorial content, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Today we are going to be doing a crochet tutorial for this sweater vest, which is houndstooth inspired, as you can tell. And it might look complicated, or at least I hope it looks complicated, but it's actually very simple to do, and I will show you how to do that in this video. This sweater vest uses category 3 weight yarn, which will be your cheaper and easier to find yarns like Red Heart and some other brands that I will link below. They also have a bunch of color options so you can make this sweater vest whatever you want it to be. So this tutorial will be modeled off of a sweater or sweater vest that you already have that you know fits you well. And we will be using the profile of that item to size this garment to fit you. This crochet stitch actually isn't as breathable as some knitted items that you might be modeling off of, so we will take that into account and I will kind of throw nods into what we should be doing along the way. So that being said, the description of this video will not have specific numbers in it because everybody's size is going to be different and won't have size buckets either. And it will just have kind of an outline of the steps we've taken to get through this, but the video will be the most important part of the tutorial. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Leave a comment with how it went or any questions you have or even anything else you'd like to see me make. And with that, let's get into the video. So let's talk materials. I use this white and blue yarn by Red Heart. It's their Super Saver yarn, which I believe runs about $360, $370 US dollars a ball. So you could make this for around $7. And the blue is called Country Blue and the white is called White. On the label it says I, but I wanted to go with some tighter stitches so I grabbed a G hook or a 4.25 millimeter for all my Europeans out there. And this is what our stitch is going to look like. It really is just two stitches repeating and that is it. So this is where our other article of clothing that fits as well is going to come into play. We are going to model the chains that we make longer than the existing article of clothing to compensate for the chain shrinking back. And that is going to happen because we are placing stitches into the chain and that is causing them to move closer together. And so in order to overcompensate for that, we are going to chain about four inches longer than what the original piece was. If you want a looser fitting, then chain more. And if you want a tighter fitting, then maybe chain less. But I would say four inches is a good guideline, maybe 10 centimeters um, to start this process. So go ahead and pause your video here and then meet me back once you have found an object and um, measured that in chains that would work for you. For reference, I am about a small, and I would say the sweater vest I made equates to about a small, and using the G-hook and the Red Heart yarn, I chained 62 stitches for my front panel. So that is the length of my chain and it will vary based on your size. So now we're going to begin our pattern. And to begin, what we're going to do is chain one as our turning chain that's helping us bring up to the next row and then we're going to be working into the top loop of all these chains as we go across but we're going to skip one and then work into the top loop of the third chain i guess that would be a single crochet then we're going to yarn over and this will be a double crochet into the next top loop and to do that, you go through the loop, yarn over again, you have three on your hook, yarn over, you're gonna pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two again. Double crochet. Now we're going to single crochet again. So we don't yarn over, we go straight through the top loop, yarn over, and then pull through the two loops that we have on our hook. Now back to double crochet, and we're gonna continue this way single crochet then double crochet all the way down the row and this will begin our pattern. So we're just going to continue in this way all the way down the piece and then meet me back here when you're done. So now we have our first row done and we have this loop left on our hook and this is going to be where we're going to attach our contrast color to begin our color work. And I promise it's not as scary as it sounds and there won't be a ton of ends to weave in which is going to be really nice. So with that loop on your hook, you're going to place your contrast yarn in front of your working piece and then just yarn over using that and then chain again. And there you go, you're all attached. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to want to take these two tails that we have. One of them, I guess, is the tail from the contrast color, and one of them is still the blue yarn that we're working with. And we're just going to carry those with us as we work these next rows of stitches and we're just going to work them into the stitches and I'll show you what I mean by that. So we have our stitches here on the top and what we're going to do is we're going to see what we did below and we're going to do the opposite of that on the next row. So you can see I ended with a single crochet so now I need to begin with a double crochet to layer on top of that. And then that'll start my pattern here. So now I'll be double crocheting and then single and then double and then single. As I work, I'm being sure to layer those strands of yarn on top directly of the stitch that I'm working so that I can basically have the yarn go over top of it and then it will be included in the stitch. So I'm working around those two strands as you can see here and then completing my stitch as normal. So now I, I just did a double crochet. I'm going to work a single crochet and it's helpful to pull those yarns taut as you work through, but not too tight so that you have too much tension. But for my single crochet, I'm working under the, the loops, yarning over so that the yarn crosses over those strands that I have there. And then I'm pulling everything nice and tight, but not too tight. So there is definitely a balance here as you're working across that is delicate, but also not that complicated because you can, you'll be able to tell as you're working if it's too tight or if it's too loose. So I'm just going to continue in this way. We are working the same single crochet, double crochet pattern as we were on the first row, but now we just need to be careful and make sure that we are doing the opposite of the row before on the row above. So just keep that in mind as you're working. Oh, I see directly below this stitch I'm working. There's a single crochet. I need to put a double crochet on top of it. And that will take us all the way across the row. One last thing as you work this row, the white strand will end because that is just an end of the yarn we just attached. So once that ends, you're done with it and you're only carrying along the blue strand the rest of the way. And then once we get to the end, I will show you how to reattach our next color because we're gonna begin working with blue again. So go ahead and pause your video and then meet me back when you're ready. Okay, so here I am at the end of the row working my white yarn. And I have one stitch left and I just worked a single crochet so the next one is going to be a double crochet. Here's how I'm going to attach the blue again. I'm going to yarn over and begin working the double crochet with the white. Yarn over again so that I have three loops on my hook and then I'm going to yarn over, pull through two of those loops with the white. Then I'm going to drop the white, grab the blue, and I'm going to pull through with the blue for those last two loops. And that is how you switch colors. I'm going to chain one for turning, and then that is right where we started with the last row. So now instead of carrying blue, I'm going to be carrying white as I work this row of stitches, and I'm going to work the same way with the blue in looking for the opposite stitch of the row previous. So I just ended with a double crochet. I'm going to work a single crochet, and then from there, double, single, double, single, double, single, all the way across. So it gets to be a pretty mindless pattern after a while, and carrying that yarn with you becomes second nature. Just be sure to check every couple stitches that it is there and there's none peeking out and that your tension is good along the way. So you're going to keep working in this way to basically form a rectangle, repeating the same stitches and the same pattern until you form this bottom half of the sweater vest, and then we will begin shaping the armholes. So go ahead and take the time to do that, and then meet me back here, and we will work together to form the armholes. Okay, here we are with the rectangle all complete. I got my coffee, I'm feeling energized, and I'm ready to start shaping the armhole. So I'm going to show you the sweater vest that I'm modeling this shape after. It has ribbing on it, which I also want to include in mine. So I am going to be mindful of that and maybe make my curves a bit more severe so that there's room for that ribbing. I don't want to have too wide of a shoulder. So here is the panel that I've worked up separately as an example to show you guys what will happen in the end. And I have those curved curves marked out and I actually made note of what I did. And I think that's good advice going forward. 
um, so you can repeat exactly what you're doing here on your second panel. So I have my blue yarn up, right? And normally I would start by going into the stitch right next to where I chained up from, but I'm actually going to skip one stitch and work into the third stitch from the beginning. So that being said, that serves as a decrease and we'll begin to shape the curve of the armhole that we are looking for. I'm working a single crochet because I see below that is a double crochet and I want to be still working the opposite of what is below the stitch I'm working on. And that being said, after that beginning decrease, we can see the curve beginning to form. I'm just going to work this row as usual as I have been with that alternating pattern. Here I am at the end, and I wanted to show you how you're going to decrease on the opposite side so that we have even amounts. So I have two stitches left, and instead of working into that last, second to last stitch, I'm only going to work into the last stitch, and that is going to help me begin the decrease on that side. Then I'm going to switch yarn colors, begin working with my white. And then I'm going to begin again on the other side, same situation. I'm not going to work into that first stitch that I would normally begin to make a straight square piece. I'm going to try to curve it, so I'm skipping one and working into the next stitch in the same pattern that I would have. So there's where I should be working but I'm going to find where I should be working to decrease by one and making sure to carry across the blue strand as I go and pulling the yarn tight. And there we can see we have our curve beginning to take form. And you can play with this and make these very severe. You see like, like some sweater vests will have very thin shoulders, some will have thick, and this is where you get the freedom to choose what style you want. I was modeling it again after that same piece, so I just followed the curve of that, and I was pretty happy with how it turned out. Because this crochets up so fast, it really isn't that big of a deal to go back and tear out whatever you didn't like. Okay, so hopefully you're still with me at this point, and now I'm going to move on to another shape in this piece. I'm seeing a rectangle right here like I'm outlining, and that is a good thing that I would like to advise you to find shapes within the piece that you're trying to make, and then use those as building blocks and build them one shape at a time, and eventually you'll end up with the larger piece. So before I get to the top, the top shoulder pieces, I'm going to work up this rectangular piece, which looks like it's going to have straight edges to me and then pretty much the same way all the way across as was the beginning piece. So that's what I'm seeing in my shape. If you're seeing something different, try to break it down shape by shape and work that way. So I'm going to work this up and then I'll meet you back here once I'm done. So with that complete, I am going to begin to work on these shoulder flaps, I guess you could call them. I'm not really sure. And I wanted a more crew neck look, so I was going for circular for the head to fit through. And I'm going to basically be working about a third of the way across and then turning and decreasing to get that shape. And I can smooth this out later when I go in with the ribbing as what I'm thinking in my head right now as I'm making this. So it might not be perfectly circular um, and yours might not either. A V-neck shape would be different in that you want the, the lines to be much more crisp um, so that beginning has a point and you would want to start this probably earlier than I'm starting now so that you have a longer v-neck. So just again find those shapes and work in the way that you see the piece coming together. Um, if you want a crew neck shape go ahead and follow along with me here. So I'm going to work across like I said about a third of the way and and then I'm going to turn the piece so that I am ready to start shape the neck hole. Okay, so here I am at the end and I've switched over to the blue and I'm going to turn my work and then I'm going to chain one. And here is going to be a similar step as was the armhole shaping and we're going to work into not the one directly after our turning chain, but one over. And that is going to help us 
begin to form a curve to shape this circular crew neck. So there I am working into that stitch. And then I'm just going to, from there, tighten up my carrying my white yarn and I'm going to work as normal across the row and going to work in the same pattern that I have been until I get to the end. This is also a place where you can make a decision about how wide you want the shoulders to be in that you can increase when you get to the end and add stitches to widen that shoulder flap or you can make them thinner or you can keep them the same which is kind of what I opted for. So here I am at the end of the row. I'm bringing up my next color and now I have a clear definition of where I'm going to start and stop. And like I said, I'm going to be building the beginning part of this exactly. So I'm going to be adding one to one, but then at the end, I'm going to decrease by one stitch and I'm going to create more of a slant for around the collar. But on the side that I'm working on right here, I'm going to begin right where I should and not decrease any. So this is part of the choice that you can make in the look of your sweater vest. And again, if you're using a, an actual sweater vest to guide you, then it will be very clear in the shape that you want to follow. I'm just trying to give you the tools to be able to execute making that shape. So I'm just going to keep working this way and increasing the length of the shoulder flap while also decreasing the width until I achieve a length that is similar to the item that I'm working with. So with my sweater vest, I know that I have about four or five inches from that trough of the crew neckline. And from there, I want to make sure that I replicate that exactly on both panels so that when they meet up, they will be comfortable and I will have enough room for my head to fit through and for my neck to sit in there and be comfortable. So I'm just going to keep working that way and then I'm going to complete this thing in opposite on the other side. So I'm going to attach my yarn and I'm going to work up a similar piece. Again, just where I made those decreases on the inside, I want to make on the inside of the opposite shoulder flap. If that makes sense, I really hope it does. Um, again, it's really good to write down your steps as you're doing this, just so you have a reference to go back because we're not really looking at a pattern. We are our own crocheters. Yes, we are our own designers and um, that will help you make two identical pieces. And then once you do that, come back here and I will show you how we're going to attach them together. And we will attach these two top pieces first so that way we can go in, make sure, try it on, make sure it fits, and then finalize the rest of the piece because we can always go in and make changes, but once we sew it together, it's kind of a done deal. So good luck. See you soon. Okay, here we are with our panels complete, and I really hope that you have a good shape that you like and you're ready to assemble. So as you were working through the houndstooth, maybe you noticed that one side will have more of one color than the other. And I was liking the way that this side with more white was looking. So I wanted to have that on the outside. So much like in sewing, we're gonna do right sides together here to attach these top two shoulder pieces. And that means the right side for me, which is the side with more white, would be touching. So right sides together. And then I have them pretty much one-to-one -one set up here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to single crochet across this to sew them together. Instead of using a darning needle, I'm just gonna use my hook that I already have out, and it'll be easy. So I'm going to attach my yarn by sticking my hook through both of the pieces, their first loops, and then I'm going to attach my yarn and basically slip stitch through those, and then I'm going to chain one and begin single crocheting across that row. Something you may have learned throughout this tutorial is the ability to carry your ends with you as you crochet. So you don't really have to go back and weave in ends and that's definitely possible here too. So I'm carrying across that white end with me so that I don't have to go back and weave it in later. Why, why add another step to this already arduous process of crocheting a vest? So I'm working through both sets of two loops across both pieces and then single crocheting to finish the stitch. And that's how I'm working across this piece. And I'm going to do that here 
and when I get to the end I'm going to cut my yarn and I will have to weave in that end unfortunately and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side and then try it on. I'll be able to test the fit and see if I have a good amount of room for the ribbing that I want to add and that'll give me a gauge for how wide that ribbing it should be and all that good stuff. So with that I'm going to attach these and then I'm going to attach the sides in the same way once I know that it fits well. Now that I know that it fits well I'm going to attach the sides of the piece, the sides of the sweater vest together in the same way. I'm going to single crochet and I'm going to attach my yarn and I'm going to work from the bottom up to the armhole and I'm going to stop right where those decreases begin and we start to shape that curve and that is my cue to stop sewing. Once you do that, meet me back here and we will attach our ribbing. Okay, now with all of our seams attached that need to be attached, I'm going to turn the sweater vest inside out. And I always wanna do this right sides together when I'm crocheting pieces together because otherwise you'll get a little ridge that will show on the outside and we don't want that. So with all that tucked away, we are ready to start on the ribbing and I wanna start on the waistband ribbing first because I wanna make that a bit thicker so I think that'll be easier to see for the sake of a tutorial. So I'm going to start by slip knotting onto my hook and then I'm going to attach the yarn to the bottom piece. So I'm going to put my hook through those two loops, yarn over, grab yarn, and then yarn over again and pull through those two loops for a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain up as many stitches as I want in my ribbing. So I want this to be a little bit thicker and I'm gonna go with five chains plus one as a turning chain. And then I'm ready to begin. And this ribbing is very simple. So I'm going to skip that turning chain and work into the top loop of the third loop, I guess that would be. And I'm just going to single crochet back down to the beginning. And then that attaching loop that you got the yarn on the piece with will also count as a chain so that there's no gaps in your piece. So now I'm ready, I'm back at the beginning, I'm about to work into that last loop. So I'm going to work through it, yarn over, and now I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to work into the actual sweater vest itself along the edge. I'm going to yarn over, now I have three loops on my hook, and I'm going to pull through all three of those to end the row. That's how you're going to attach the ribbing back to the sweater vest at the end of those rows. So now I'm going to chain one to turn, and I'm going to work in single crochets all the way back, but I'm going to work them only into the back loop. So I'm just single crocheting, into the back loop, being careful not to miss any stitches, and working those into the back loop all the way across. This is very important to work into the back loop because that is how we're going to get that texture from it being ribbing. So I wanna make sure I get the last stitch and then I'm done, I'm going to turn the piece and I'm going to chain one. And we can see that texture beginning to form. So there's my chain. Now I'm going to continue working into the back loop. So I'm going to single crochet, I know I keep saying it, into the back loop again. Making sure I'm in frame, I think. Not really sure working single crochets into the back loop. This does get easier as you work along and doesn't take as long of a time as it, I'm making it to look right now. Now I'm working into the back loop, yarning over, have that on my hook. Now I'm going to kind of hold the piece up to see where that ribbing would land against the sweater vest. I'm working in to grab a stitch there and then I'm pulling through all the hook loops on my hook to attach that ribbing. And that's a good gauge is to hold the yarn to see where it would naturally fall and then attach that at that point. 
to make sure you don't have any gaps or it's not too stretched or it's not too loose and it starts to cluster that is the best way to do it and then that is really it for the ribbing you're just going to keep working back and forth and after about two rows you're going to need to attach it back to the sweater vest and then you work back out and back in and always into the back loop and that is really it for ribbing I do want to mention how I made the thinner ribbing which is around the neckline and around the armholes that involved less chains so I said I used five chains in the other ribbing around the waistline and here I, I did three and that obviously results in a thinner ribbing so I will just show you how I did that I thought the thicker one was easier to see there's more stitches more going on type of thing but I just attach it in the same way with the slip stitch and then I'm going to begin my chains so there's two and then three one more to turn so that's how many I used oh I guess I did four wow shocking and then oh no see I went back I canceled that I did do three okay voiceover Kayla learns a lot okay so now I'm going to work into that stitch and I'm single crocheting this first row we can't really work into the back loop it's better just to work into the top loop all the way down here's the last one so I'm going to before I pull through I want to connect it to the actual sweater vest itself now around the armhole there aren't as nice of stitches to pick up so you will have to work into some probably tighter areas and you want to make sure you grab more than one strand of yarn to attach to because otherwise that could pull and leave a gap you want to make sure it is a secure area where it's like two strands of yarn is what you're working under so yeah now it gets a little bit harder to see but I will still be working into the back loop oh yeah I'm letting you see now so I have my yarn I'm working into the back loop to single crochet and with the three chains I will tell you it works up very fast and you just want to make sure you keep your tension even throughout because that will lead to some une uneven looking stitches and that's not what we want so with that end done I'm going to turn the piece over I'm going to chain one to turn and then I'm going to work in those three stitches again again single crocheting through the back loop with my finger directly over what you guys would need to see okay so there's my first single crochet there's the second and for the third working through yarning over but before I'm going to match up to see where it would fit comfortably and I'm going to work into that area see how I went under two strands of yarn not just one and I'm going to pull through all three loops and that is your thinner ribbing and really guys that is it I will show you actually right now pause the video if you want to see how I combine the two together once you've worked around all the way around the opening and you're ready to connect the two pieces of ribbing to form kind of a seamless seam if you will I will show you that so pause get to where you need to be and then come back for that information so flipping back over to the thicker ribbing along the waistline I'm just working back from starting at the end down the row to where I would connect to the sweater vest honestly this whole waistline probably took me an hour and a half to complete um, while watching a movie so not too big of a fuss for this detail if you want to throw it on at the end a lot of machine made sweater vests would have it okay and having connected that last stitch that last row to the sweater vest I feel like I'm ready to connect these two and instead of using a darning needle which you totally could do I'm going to while I have my hook towards the sweater vest you know and I'm working out I'm just going to single crochet back across by grabbing all four of those loops in onto the hook and then single crocheting I'm going to single crochet down the row to secure this in place and that should give us a nice tight seam and um, keep everything in place 
for the ribbing. I'm making sure to grab the last stitch, make sure there's no gaps, not going to be any weird shapes that pop out. It's looking like it's all coming together. That means I can cut my yarn and there will be a few ends to weave in, but for the majority of the piece, we've carried those with us the whole time, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but that is going to be your finished sweater vest. Hey you guys, how'd it go? If you have a finished vest, I would love to see the finished product, so please send me a DM on Instagram. I'm at Let's Get Knit Face there. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.